My name is Lisa. I'm 26 years old. I have two kids, ages 4 and 3, who attend daycare. Currently, I'm working part-time at my uncle's company until my children grow up. My husband, who recently received a promotion to supervisor at the supermarket where he works, is 32 years old. When he got the promotion, he was shyly happy, saying with a smile during dinner, It somehow reminds me of when I received my first job offer. Our children, even though they didn't understand what was going on, seemed happy to see their parents having a cheerful conversation. It seemed like our family time was wrapped in happiness. Today, the promotion was officially announced, so I splurged a bit and bought some higher quality meat that my husband likes in celebration and made a delicious meal while waiting for him to come home. However, when he came home, his facial expression seemed different. I went to the door with our kids as usual and said, Welcome home! But he didn't respond with his usual, I'm home! And a smile. Our kids and I were puzzled, but I thought he might be tired. So I told him dinner was ready without making a big deal about it. While I was setting the table, my husband, who usually changes clothes and cheerfully comes straight to the dining table asking, What's for dinner tonight? sat at the table with a serious expression. And then, looking at the food laid out on the table, he said, Hey, you! Is this supposed to be my celebratory meal? I couldn't believe my ears. That's because he's never called me you before. Our kids didn't know how to respond to this unfamiliar version of their father and fell silent. Feeling the mood worsen, my husband continued to say things like, You don't realize how amazing I am. I worked hard to become a supervisor. Do you understand? Seemingly upset that I didn't seem to respect him enough. I didn't want the celebration to turn sour. And more importantly, I didn't want our children to look anxious, so I tried to appease my husband. I'm sorry. Thank you for always working so hard for us. We always appreciate it, I told him. He seemed a bit better after I said that, so throughout the meal, I tried to sprinkle words of appreciation and gratitude into our conversation. But he kept saying things like, This meal isn't enough for my celebration. I was disappointed because I had splurged on expensive meat that we don't usually buy and made dishes that my husband likes thinking it would make him happy. But if he thinks the meal is modest, then I must not have met his expectations. I thought to myself and tried to calm down. I figured his unusual behavior was due to being tired from his first day as a supervisor and hoped he would be back to his normal self the next day. After the meal, I started cleaning up, relieved to see my husband talking to our children on the couch as usual. Usually, I can hear the three of them laughing, but it was very quiet, so I stopped what I was doing and listened to their conversation. I was stunned to hear what they were talking about. If you want to be like Daddy, you have to study a lot. You'll have trouble in the future if you end up like Mommy, who doesn't study. He was saying... So I rushed over and stopped the conversation. What kind of thing is that to say to the children? I asked him, but he responded angrily. It's not wrong. What's bad about it? We'd never had a fight before, so I was at a loss for words. When I stayed silent, he sneered and said, See, you can't answer, can you? You couldn't survive without me, could you? You don't want to live off of our children, do you? I asked him. What's gotten into you today? You're acting strange. You're not the type to say things like this, are you? But my husband just replied. I'm just saying what I've been thinking. I hate that you think you're on the same level as me. He made it sound as if the man I knew until yesterday wasn't his real self, but rather a facade he had been putting on. It was only then that I realized the man standing before me 
was my husband's true self. I was filled with an emotion I had never felt before. A mix of anxiety, sadness, and frustration at the shocking reality. At that moment, our eldest son, who is four, said to me, Mommy works a lot too. Who's more impressive? Your part-time working mom or your dad, the big shot at his company? My husband scoffed at our son's silence, saying, Can't you understand, even at the age of four? You must have inherited your mom's brains as well as her looks. Thinking he was being scolded, our son looked down, tears welling up in his eyes. To distract the children from the situation, I suggested with a smile, Shall we take a bath together? Usually it was my husband who bathed the kids, but they were thrilled to take a bath with me instead. Our eldest son, who usually insisted that I help him undress, quickly started to take off his clothes on his own, and our three-year-old daughter followed suit, trying her best to undress herself. After helping her a little, her clothes came off, and I praised her with a smile, saying, Well done! She looked very pleased with herself. Seeing the children like this was so healing that I almost forgot about the incident earlier. While we were in the tub chatting about what happened at daycare, my husband came into the changing room and shouted through the bathroom door. You're being too loud. And why are you taking a bath before me? The children clung to me in fear. As my husband grumbled his way back to the living room, our son said with a worried look, Daddy is mean today. I hugged my daughter, who seemed on the verge of tears, and said, Daddy is just tired and grumpy today. He'll be his usual self tomorrow. After we got out of the bath and prepared for bed, we went to the children's bedroom earlier than usual. We spoke in hushed voices as not to provoke my husband. The children seemed to find this fun. It's like we're having a secret conversation, they said, talking more than usual in their little whispers. They even tried to suppress their laughter, perhaps fearing that my husband might get angry. But the more they tried not to laugh, the more they seemed to want to. And they spent the entire time chatting and laughing happily. Watching the children like this, I felt truly happy. Having laughed themselves tired, the children fell asleep earlier than usual. I then headed for the living room where my husband was. My husband was looking at his smartphone, his hand covering his mouth, his face slightly red, as if he was embarrassed. I felt a bit off, but more importantly, we needed to discuss my husband's behavior earlier today. You've been acting really strange today, I told him. Even the kids are getting worried. He replied, What's so weird about me? If anything, you're the strange one. Aren't I supposed to be respected by our kids? Do you want them to turn out like you? He didn't feel guilty at all, even going so far as to belittle me. I told him, I've not led a life that deserves being looked down upon. But he just kept insisting. Your way of thinking is wrong. And we couldn't have a proper conversation. Then he said, We're doing things my way from now on. I'm going to change our family's wrong ways. When I asked him what he meant, he suggested that the family should always put him first, take a step back, and create an environment where he can relax. I told him, That's too different from how we've been doing things. The kids will be confused. Please stop. But it seems like he heard about the family life of a department head he respects and thought that my and the kids' attitudes towards him at home were wrong. It seems he got some words of encouragement from the department head when he got promoted and had a little chat. In that conversation, the department head had said, the reason I was able to become a department head a bit earlier than my peers is thanks to my wife. So my husband asked the department head about his wife and family. The department head's wife doesn't let him do anything, allowing him to focus solely on his work. 
This hasn't changed even after their child was born, and she manages all the housework and childcare perfectly. Their child, apparently, wants to be just like their father, too. Hearing this, my husband seemed to think that the reason his promotion came later than his peers was my fault. He now believes that if he makes our family like the department head's family, he can catch up with his peers and get promoted earlier. I didn't say it out loud, but I thought to myself that it wasn't my fault, but rather his work wasn't being appreciated. I felt so drained all of a sudden. As I was heading to the bedroom to sleep, my husband stopped me. The moment I got promoted, I've been admired more than ever by the part-timers and temps. As soon as I became a supervisor, my phone never stops buzzing, he said, a hint of blush on his face. Then he said, you should be more grateful you've got such a popular guy for a husband. Misunderstanding the fact that people relying on him means he's popular. I had my doubts about what he said, but I was too exhausted, so I just said, sure, sure, and went to the kid's room. I got into the kid's bed and decided to sleep there. The next morning, I was disappointed to find that yesterday wasn't a dream. When our son casually said, Good morning, to my husband, he suddenly yelled, It's good morning, sir, to your father. Our daughter, startled and scared, burst into tears, and our son, holding back his tears, said, Good Good morning, sir. Seeing this, I yelled, Don't shout at them for greeting you as they always have. But my husband yelled back at me, Didn't you understand what I said yesterday? You should be grateful just to be with someone like me. He continued. In front of the children, our eldest son, who had been holding back his tears, as he had never seen such a quarrel before, also started crying. I couldn't help but join them in crying due to a mix of anger and sadness. Seeing this, my husband exclaimed, What a depressing start to the morning, and left for work without eating his breakfast. As I was comforting the crying children, our eldest son caressed my head and told me, Don't cry, Mom. Wiping away my tears, I hugged the children tightly and assured them with a smile, I won't cry anymore. Then I prepared for my work and got the kids ready for daycare before heading out. When I was with the children, I could act cheerfully, but when I was alone, I felt incredibly down. I can't help but think about how to restore our family to its previous state of happiness. The company I work for is a consulting firm run by my uncle. My uncle is my mother's brother. Since he and his wife never had children, they've always doted on me since I was young, like a second set of parents. On his recommendation, I obtained the necessary certification to work as an HR consultant, and now I work at his company. After I gave birth to my children, they have allowed me to work shorter hours. While my uncle runs the consulting firm, my aunt runs a real estate agency. Our apartment is rented from her real estate company. When I arrived at work, my uncle noticed my tear-streaked face and expressed his concern. I brushed it off with a smile, saying, I just couldn't help but cry when I saw the kids off to daycare. But I think my uncle saw through me. He kindly told me, don't hesitate to talk to me if you need anything, while patting my head. Once again, I held back my tears and got on with my work. After finishing work at 3 p.m., I bid farewell to my colleagues, who were still working, and went to pick up my children from daycare. We then headed to the supermarket for groceries. The supermarket is also where my husband works. I am familiar with the staff, so I greet them as I shop. A part-time worker who usually chats with me, congratulated me on my husband's promotion to supervisor. I responded, Thank you. It's all thanks to all of you. Please continue to support my husband. 
Usually, this part-time worker would engage in some, in some small talk, but today she approached me with a serious expression. Just as she was about to say something, my husband, who happened to be in the store, caught her attention, and she quickly returned to her duties. My husband told me, Don't interfere with a part-timer's work. Finish your shopping and go home. I thought I might have indeed disturbed her work, so I simply replied, All right and started shopping, pulling along our child's hand. After finishing shopping and waiting in line for checkout, I saw my husband talking to a young female part-timer at a distance that seemed too close for just work-related conversation. I brushed it off and continued with the checkout when my daughter went over to my husband and the part-timer. My husband shooed her away with a dismissive hand gesture. She returned to me with a saddened expression. As I looked at my husband, he and the part-timer went into the back of the store through a door. My woman's intuition was at work, and I had a bad feeling. But more than that, my mind was filled with the question of how could I restore my family to its previous happy state. After doing the shopping, I got home, let the kids play, and pondered while preparing dinner. But no good ideas came to mind. I thought about consulting my uncle but I decided to think more about it because it's about my own family. I told myself that there must be a way out. I had dinner ready by the usual time my husband gets home, but no matter how long I waited, he didn't come back. I thought I would just get scolded if I called him, so I waited for him to come home without calling. I ate dinner with the kids first, took a bath together, and finally when the kids were asleep in their bedroom, my husband came home. His working hours are from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and the store closes at 8 p.m. I wondered if he had to work overtime. So I didn't ask anything and just reheated dinner. However, my husband said, I don't need dinner today. I've already eaten. So I silently turned off the stove and cleaned up. When I glanced at my husband, he seemed to be exchanging messages with someone on his smartphone. He noticed my gaze and began to make excuses even though I didn't ask, saying, Listening to the employee's concerns is also a part of a supervisor's job. At that moment, I felt my woman's intuition was getting closer to the truth. Something's fishy, I thought. I felt like my husband was no longer the man I loved, and I was overcome with sadness. My heart ached sharply. My heart rate quickened, and I felt constricted. I can't restore my happy family by myself. As my suspicion that my husband may have a woman he likes approaches certainty, my goal of restoring a happy family seems to be drifting away. My legs started trembling, so I said goodnight to my husband and decided to sleep in the kids' bedroom again, but I couldn't sleep, and morning came. The kids remembered what happened yesterday morning and said, Good morning politely to their father. I saw my husband off to work after breakfast saying, have a good day. During the sleepless night, I was thinking about how to restore my family. To do that, I concluded that I must bring back my husband's feelings towards the family. So I decided to study cooking more and work harder on housework to win back his feelings. However, my husband started coming home late almost every day and stopped eating at home. I thought I should not provoke him now and did not discuss it with my husband. No, maybe I was scared to find out that my husband's feelings were no longer with me, and I might not want to hear harsh words from my husband. So I started to avoid conversation as much as possible. One day, when I was sleeping in the kids' bedroom as usual, I heard a conversation in the living room as if my husband was talking to someone. Even though I thought eavesdropping was bad, I quietly approached the living room door and listened to the conversation through the door. It's okay, Mary. She won't find out. My wife is so oblivious. I realized that the woman my husband is thinking about now is Mary. I really love you, Mary, he said. I was listening very calmly as if I had given up on winning back my husband's feelings. 
I could give up my family for your sake, Mary. When these words came out of my husband's mouth, my mind went blank. I flung open the door and confronted my husband. What do you mean by giving up your family? Are you saying you'll abandon not only me, but also our children? I yelled at him. My husband quickly hung up the phone, his face slightly flustered. But the next moment, he had a defiant attitude. You'd have a hard time with two kids if we divorced, so just silently accept that I'm seeing her. He said, What are you talking about? There's no way I can accept that. It's not a parent's place to talk about abandoning their children. I couldn't hold back any longer. Even though I was worried about waking up the kids, I couldn't stay calm, and I raised my voice to my husband. My husband, who had never seen me argue back so much, was taken aback. But he took a deep breath and shouted back at me. Who do you think you are, working part-time? If you're so bitter, stop leeching off me. Don't you dare defy me. The next moment, our eldest son went up to my husband and cried out, I hate you! Get out! My husband said to our eldest son, You guys are the ones who should leave. I stood in front of our son and said, Don't be so harsh on the kids. I thought our son would cry even more, but he was glaring at my husband with an angry face. My husband took out an envelope likely from the government office, from his bag, and handed it to me with a smirk. Inside the envelope was a divorce paper. You guys, get out. I'll give you two days. Be out by then. Saying that, my husband packed his things and left in the car. I hugged our eldest son and said, Thank you for standing up for mom. To which he replied, I hate anyone who bullies mom and began to cry. <laughs> when I went into the bedroom where our son and daughter were, our daughter jumped out of the bed, hugged me, and started trembling as she cried. I told my children, shall we live somewhere without daddy, just the three of us? Without any hesitation, the kids said, we don't want this scary place. We don't need dad. Their decision as little kids might change someday. However, living with someone who can easily say that he will abandon his children for the woman he loves will never lead to the happiness of the children. On the contrary, it might hurt the children physically and mentally. I thought the first priority was to separate the children from my husband as soon as possible. So even though it was late at night, I called my parents and told them everything that had happened. My parents told me to come home right away, but I declined, because it would take two hours to get there from here. The reason was that I really enjoyed the job at my uncle's company, and I thought it would not be good for the children to change their environment completely. Moreover, they have a lot of friends at the daycare center, and they look forward to going there every day so I couldn't choose to go back to my parents' house right away. I consulted with my uncle and told him that I was planning to rent an apartment for my aunt's real estate company. My parents were worried, but they said they would come here first thing tomorrow and ask my uncle and aunt together. The following day, my parents came to my uncle's company, pleaded with him on my behalf, and my aunt was present too. They promised me they would rent me a room. Afterwards, since I was quite busy with work, I asked my parents to handle the moving preparations and picking up the kids from daycare. I had things to do, so I informed my parents I'd be back late and went to work. When my shift ended, I went to the supermarket where my husband works and informed him that I agreed to the divorce. And once that was done, I would go to the county clerk's office to submit the divorce papers. A part-time worker who seemed to want to say something to me then stopped me. She took me to the restroom and conveyed what she had wanted to tell me the other day. I couldn't say this before, but your husband seems to be chasing after a part-time girl. I asked the part-time worker if the girl's name was Mary. She looked surprised and asked, How did you know? 
I told her that my husband had told me they were dating. She then said she would call this Mary girl and left the restroom. I waited for Mary with mixed feelings. Soon, Mary, a girl with a cute face, came alone. She told me that my husband had threatened her by saying, I won't cut your part-time contract if you get along with me. He also told her to exchange contact information, and she reluctantly did so, after which she started receiving messages from him at all hours. She told me that he waited for her near the employee entrance until her late shift ended every day and asked her to go to the diner, which was troublesome for her. What was even more frightening was that on Mary's days off, he would come near her house and tell her to come out. She thought this was scary, if true, and showed me all the content of the messages as evidence. I understood that what Mary was saying was true, and I told her that I had heard from my husband that he was dating Mary, and that wasn't the cause, but I would be submitting the divorce papers afterwards. Mary said she wished she had told me about this sooner, but I told her not to worry about it, as this divorce was inevitable. For some reason, we hit it off and exchanged contact information, and then left the restroom. I looked around the store for my husband. However, I couldn't find him, so I went around to the employee entrance and decided to have him called from the office. My husband approached me with a grin and said to me, So you've come to your senses. You can't support two kids on a part-timer's salary. With no sympathy left for my husband, I coldly retorted, I can't do it anymore. Let's get a divorce. He looked surprised and asked, Are you sure? How are you going to raise the kids on your own? I replied, You do know I work as a social worker, right? I work part-time with reduced hours, but my income is higher than yours, so don't worry. He seemed surprised. Then I said, I'm going to submit the divorce papers, goodbye, and headed to the county clerk's office. After submitting the divorce papers, I felt a strange sense of relief, and I couldn't wait to see my children. As I was walking home, I heard a voice from behind me saying, Oh, Lisa! I turned around to see the department head's wife waving and approaching me. You seem cheerful. Something good happened? She asked. Well, it's a bit of a long story, I started and she kindly suggested we go to a cafe to talk. I was hoping to see my children, but I also thought it best to inform her of my divorce, so we went to the cafe together. I told my parents, I'll be late. I have some things to discuss with the department head's wife before settling down at the cafe. I also informed her about my divorce and the reasons behind it. She seemed surprised to hear this. Oh! It sounds like you've only heard a beautified version of the story, she said. According to her, the department head is quite helpless outside of work. He's clumsy to the point that even when he tries to help with housework, it ends up creating more work for her. For instance, he would break dishes while washing them because his hands would slip with the soap. He would hang the laundry without straightening the wrinkles and he almost caused a fire by overheating the pan while cooking. So she told him, Just focus on your work. Every time you do something, it just adds to my workload. The reality was that the department head wanted to help with the chores, but she had forbidden him from doing so. When I asked if their child admired the department head because he became a manager at a young age and was therefore respected, she said, that must be it. He doesn't have to do anything at home. My husband is a complete goof outside of work. That's what makes him adorable. She smiled happily as she said this. I realized then that the department head wasn't a tyrant at home, but rather a cute husband who was led by the nose by his wife. They seemed like a pleasant family. I also discussed my concerns about what Mary was going through with my husband. I spoke to the department head's wife about Mary without her permission, considering Mary's safety. 
I knew her father was an executive at the supermarket where my husband worked. I was certain that her husband, who was eager for promotion, would succumb to pressure from above. The department head's wife said that if this was true, it would be a violation of company policy and needed to be investigated. So we ended the conversation there. Before we parted, she said to me, You and your children have the right to happiness. If anything happens, let me know. And we exchanged contact information. When I hurried home, the house was already empty. We finished preparing for the move. Let's go to our new house. He said, and we got into the car and headed to our new house. My aunt's employees had helped, and my mother had decided where to place the furniture, so we were ready to start our new life right away. What surprised me more was the size of the living room and the number of rooms. Each of our children now had their own room. There was also a room for my parents to stay when they visited. I thanked my aunt and uncle for renting us this place at such a low rent. You really don't need to pay any rent, my aunt said, but I was grateful even for the reduced rent. That night, we celebrated the divorce and the move with those who had helped us. Three days later, I got a nasty call from my ex-husband, which I, of course, ignored. I only read the one message he sent on WhatsApp, but I didn't respond. He was surprised to find that all the furniture was gone and only his belongings were left in the room and demanded the furniture back. Most of the furniture was something I bought when I was single, so I just overlooked it. Three days later, I got a call from the department head's wife as well. She told me that the department head had given my ex-husband a stern talking to. Apparently, he was left in a state of shock, his face pale after being told to live in regret for the rest of his life because there was no turning back. After that, Mary and her parents went to the headquarters compliance department, explained what had been done to her by my ex-husband with evidence from their WhatsApp messages, and submitted call recordings as new evidence. It seemed that this was suggested by the department head's wife to Mary. When my ex-husband found out that the damage report had been reported to the headquarters, he said, I'm not stalking her. We're dating. However, he was told by the folks at the headquarters that having a romantic relationship with a part-time employee while you have a wife is also a violation of compliance. He was shocked into silence. Then, the headquarters representative showed the evidence submitted by Mary, and upon realizing that he had really been causing trouble, that there had been no relationship, and that it was all a misunderstanding. My ex-husband broke down in tears. In the end, it seems he was given a notice of dismissal from the company and was said to be transferred as a regular employee to the branch in Alaska. After that, it seems my ex-husband went to report our divorce and demotion to his in-laws. The in-laws were angry about the cause of the divorce and the fact that they would never see their grandchildren again and they kicked him out of the house. I received an apology and report from my in-laws about this. I also received an apology from my in-laws, and they promised to make sure he paid his child support properly. Every day, I get messages from my ex-husband saying he wants to start over, but I'm thinking about blocking him soon. My children don't mention their father at all. On the contrary, they seem to be living happily being pampered by their aunt and uncle. I'm done with marriage. From now on, I want to protect my children's smiles and happiness at all costs.